So I've been working on this homemade modular system for a while now, and I'm quite happy with the results. But there's one area where I feel like it's kind of lacking, and that would be sequencing. Because at the moment, I'm using this analog step sequencer, which is fine, it gets the job done, but it's not the most convenient way to program melodies. And that's because with analog sequencers, you don't get to pick any specific musical notes. You have to dial in the exact frequency. Now try to find a C or a G. It's really hard, and that's why most of your sequences are going to sound something like this. If you compare this to the way that a keyboard works, you see that on a keyboard, you have the same 12 keys repeated over and over. And those correspond to the 12 musical notes. And this makes it much easier to actually play the notes you want to play. So to work out the key difference between the two approaches, I try to visualize them here. With my sequencer, you're able to pick a frequency from this continuum, which means you can land on some note, but you can also land somewhere in between. With a keyboard, your options are pre-filtered. You can only ever play the frequencies that it allows you to play, nothing in between. And this is basically the difference between analog and digital, because analog is always about a continuum, and digital is always about discrete values. So figuring this out, I knew that the device I was planning would have to operate digitally. Now the obvious solution would be to use a microcontroller, like an Arduino. But this has never felt quite DIY to me. And that's why I came up with this. I call it my logic arpeggiator, because it's basically made up from a combination of logic gates. Now, to understand how it works, we'll first have to talk about the basics of digital electronics. In digital electronics, everything revolves around the bit. And the bit is this kind of abstract entity that can only ever be in one of two states, which are off and on. Working with just one bit is not going to get you very far, though, because you're only ever able to display one of two states. But if you combine multiple bits together, your options actually grow exponentially. Take this for example. I put together four bits, which means that I can actually display 16 individual states. Now that we have these 16 individual states, the question is, what do we do with them? Well, if you think back to our example with the keyboard, you'll remember that each key was assigned a specific musical note. I've decided to just copy this idea and do the same thing, but replacing keys with bit states. If this sounds confusing to you, just imagine that each of the bit states now represents one key on the keyboard. So this state would be representing this key, this state would be representing this key, and this state would be representing this key, 
and so on. This way, we're able to map 16 of the keys to a 4-bit space. And this is all fine and well, but the question is, how do we convert these bit states into something that our synthesizer can understand? Well, it turns out that most synthesizers are operating with a standard called volt per octave, which maps voltages to musical notes. And with volt per octave, we know that the voltage difference between two neighboring notes is always going to be one twelfth of a volt. Knowing this, we can actually assign specific voltages to our bit states. So our first bit state would need to be converted to zero volts. Our second bit state would need to be converted to one twelfth of a volt. And our third bit state would need to be converted to two twelfth of a volt, and so on. And the way that we're going to do this is by using this chip, which is called the TLC7524. It's an 8-bit digital to analog converter, which means that you can send in up to 8 bits and have it convert those bits into an analog voltage, which is exactly what we're after. It's important to note, though, that this is not an ordinary digital to analog converter. This is a multiplying DAC, which means that we can provide it with a reference voltage and this way determine how big the voltage difference between two successive steps is going to be. The way that this works is that the chip is taking in this reference voltage and it's dividing it across all of its possible bit states. Since this is an 8-bit device, we're going to have 256 possible values. And this means that each step is going to be the reference voltage divided by 256. So if we know that our synth is expecting the voltage difference between two successive steps to be 1 12th of a volt, our reference voltage here would need to be 21 and 1 third of a volt. Only problem is, my synth is operating with a 12 volt power supply. So getting the needed voltage is kinda out of the question. We'll have to make do with a lower value. But a lower value means a smaller voltage difference between every step. And we said we need that difference to be exactly one twelfth of a volt, right? Yes, but there is a trick we can apply. Working with halves. If we cut our reference voltage in half, our voltage differences would be one twenty-fourth of a volt. If we cut it in half again to save some headroom, we arrive at a reference voltage of five and one-third of a volt with the voltage differences being 1 48th of a volt. How does this help us? Well, 1 12th is actually 4 times 1 48th. So effectively, if we were somehow able to always take 4 steps at once, we would be good. And this is actually where we can take advantage of the fact that we're working with bits. So with decimal numbers, if we count up regularly, we increase the value by 1 on each step. But if we add a 0 to the end of our number and then increase it, we're suddenly counting up in steps of 10. And the same idea applies to binary numbers. Uh, binary, if you don't know, is what we call the numbers we can represent in bit states. The difference is, though, that adding one zero to the end of a binary number will have us count in intervals of 2 add another zero and we'll be increasing our number by four on each step, which is exactly what we're looking for here. Let's think about how to apply this idea. Take a look at this configuration diagram for our MDAC. The pins labeled B0 through B7 are our bit inputs. If we connect B0 and B1 to ground, we're setting them as zeros permanently. Now we can just act as if B2 is our first bit input, followed by B3, B4, and B5. This way we're setting our MDAC up to count in steps of 4. We'll also need to ground the remaining unused bit inputs. Uh, next we have to connect our chip to power and ground, and handle the remaining pins as shown here. These are not important for our application, just make sure you connect them to ground. In the end, you should have something that's looking like this. Now, all that's left to deal with is the reference voltage, which, weirdly enough, has to be sent into the pin labeled OUT1, while we get our output from REF. But this is just a quirk of the specific configuration we're using. The important question is, 
how do we turn the 12 volts from our power supply into 5 and 1 third of a volt? Thankfully, there's a simple solution to this problem. We can use a voltage divider, which is normally just two resistors in series. If we want to produce any specific voltage, there's a few tools online that will let you calculate the exact resistor values you need to use. In our case, resistor 1 should be 18.7k ohms, while resistor 2 needs to be 15k. Since I don't have those exact values, I'll have to improvise and string together more than two resistors. I'll add in a variable resistor for good measure. This way I can fine-tune my values and get the exact right reference voltage. So now that we have our reference voltage, uh, let's send it into the chip. It should work, right? Well, it turns out it's not that simple. Look what happens to our reference voltage if I change around some of the bits. It seems like our MDAC is loading the voltage divider and by this messing with the voltage. And that's bad because we need that voltage to be stable. But we're actually in luck again because there's another simple go-to solution for this kind of problem. We can use an op amp to buffer our reference voltage. This way the voltage divider is basically separated from our MDAC, making the voltage way more stable. To create a buffer we just need to set up an op amp like this. I'll use this TL074, which is 4 op amps in one chip. So now this is the buffer's input, while this is the buffer's output. So let's send in our reference voltage and connect the output to our MDAC. Now that I've hooked up my buffer, let's see if changing the bits does anything to the voltage. It seems pretty stable to me now. Now it's time to check the MDAC's output. Uh, let's connect the multimeters so we can see what's happening. So right now all our bits are set to zero, so the output voltage is zero as expected. If I turn on the first bit, we can see that the voltage is rising to 0.08 volts, which is roughly about 1 12th of a volt. Uh, let's check some of the other states. I'll go for the ones with round voltages, uh, since they're easier to compare. 0, 1, 1, 0 should be half a volt. And yeah, that looks about right. Uh, let's do 1001. Zero, zero, one. Yeah, that's 0.75 volts as expected. Uh, now this seems good. Uh, let's see what happens if I connect the output to the CV input of my VCO. It seems like we're running into another loading problem again. Uh, good thing we have three more op amps sitting right here in this chip. So let's build another buffer, buffer the output and then see if that fixes our problem. Well yeah, that looks much better. Now it's time to check if we actually achieved what we set out to do. We said that we wanted each of those bit states to represent one key on the keyboard. So let's try it. Right now the bits are all set to zero. So it should be playing a C. It sounds pretty good. Uh, let's try a D. That also seems to work. How about a G sharp? That sounds good to me. 
setting these bits by hand is really tedious and not especially useful in a musical setting. So we should think about ways to automate that. One solution would be to use a simple counter chip like uh, this one. It's called the 4040 binary ripple counter and it's a really straightforward chip. Uh, you send in a clock signal and it counts upwards on these bit outputs. If you don't want to count using all 12 bits, you can use uh, this pin to reset the chip's operation. So if you connect it to B4, we will only use the first four bit outputs. So let's build it and attach our LEDs to the first four bit outputs. Since a clock signal is just a steady stream of power on, power off states, we can use a regular square wave LFO here, which I have on this cable. This looks like it's working nicely, so let's connect the bits to our MDAC again. As you can hear, my synth is now playing a chromatic arpeggio. We can also visualize our MDAC's output on this oscilloscope. And I think you can really see the resemblance to the staircase graph that we started out with. In the next video, we're going to figure out how to turn this into a C major arpeggio.